the University of Chicago, looked at Charlotte Mecklenburg and all of the events that were occurring year after year inside their agency. And they found that about 17% of their officers, so all these folks in red here, were involved in some type of adverse incident over the course of a year. All of these folks here who are not in red, those are officers that were not involved in an adverse incident. So when we think about any of these early warning systems, you want to identify these officers beforehand. You want to find these officers before it's become a problem so that you can intervene and provide the right set of supports. What the research first looked at was what happens when you use a trigger-based early warning system. So first, what you want to see happen is a person turning orange, right, like this, so that you identify them early. But typically, most of the officers that were being identified by the early warning system itself were down here. So they were among the group of officers that had no off-track behavior. So they were being flagged, but there were no particular problems. You also have all these officers up here that weren't being flagged by that trigger-based early warning system. So a high rate of false negatives, almost 89% of the officers were missed as part of the study, and a high rate of false positives. So all of the officers that were being flagged down here, they actually were not going on to have an adverse incident. So you wanna make sure that any of the early intervention systems that you're using, you're identifying more of these officers and fewer of these officers. Because what happens when you have these officers being identified is that folks lose faith in the system itself. The more that people are being flagged who aren't actually undergoing problematic behavior, the harder it is for supervisors to understand what's going on. And officers feel like, yeah, we're just being flagged for doing our jobs, whereas the problematic officers aren't being identified.